Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the program control instructions within the CP1H Armoron PLC. And there are several instructions within this controller to control the program and the program flow. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look at our controller here. And what we'll do is take a look at the instructions interlock and interlock clear. These are very common in a lot of programs. And what you'll see is that the execution, um, if the condition is on, we have normal execution and whatever's in here gets scanned normally. When the condition becomes off, the outputs are interlocked, meaning they uh, turn off. And the bit status of each one, as you can see here, um, all of these bits on the outputs turn off. The timers uh, get reset. The time set value is reset on, on timers. Um, so there's a that's the exact way that the interlock works. Now here I have my controller and I have my program and we are monitoring this. And you'll see I have an always on flag here that will turn on the first output if I turn this interlock um, on. So let's do that turn that on and when that happens you'll see the output actually turns on we'll turn that uh, off now and the output turns off so the next instructions we're going to look at is the jump instruction and the jump instruction we'll take a look here we have a jump and to a jump number and then we have a jump end which signifies the end of that jump and in here so when um, the condition is on the instructions are executed just as normal when the condition is off that causes that jump then the output status is maintained so that means that um, your program is not being scanned anymore so your outputs themselves will maintain the last state unless they're activated somewhere else in your program um, and here are the bits and what happens within that controller. Now we also have things like conditional jumps and multi, multi uh, jumps that we can do in the Omron CP1H. So let's look at this example that we have up here. And here's, uh, we will turn this on. And what happens when we turn that on, we'll try to set this on. And the output then turns on. If I now um, turn this off, you'll see that my output still maintains its on status. We'll turn this off. And you'll see my output is still on. That's because the program is not being scanned now between your jump and jump end. Here I have number one, and it's going to jump end number one. Okay, so that's the jump statement. So we can turn that back on, it'll scan it, and then set it back off again. Which is exactly what it did. Turn that one off. Our next instruction is kind of unique. It's a for next loop. And what it will do is it, it goes between the for next loop a number of times before it returns the scan. So within that one scan, we can do several different loops and then uh, continue with our scan. So basically here we go. We'll say say if we had that for three then what will happen as this program scans it'll come down it'll scan this one two three times and then it will continue on to the next program down in your list. And to get out of that um, for next loop you actually need um, a either you finish the loop or you use a break and the break will actually ask or get you out of loop before you finish the number of repeats that you're looking for. So let's take a look at it, it in action and up here on my screen I have my four laps the next loop I have the number three here that we're gonna do three loops then what happens is we'll do a compare and the compare always happens and we we'll compare it to uh, data memory zero to the number three and if it's equal or greater to, it sets this bit on. When the bit turns on, that up, it causes the break. When the break happens, then we get out of the loop. 
If not, then we count one and um, or we add one if it doesn't get a loop and then we have the next which shows us back to the beginning and we do our loop again. So in our case here we have the number three. If we change this value here and we'll change it to zero set that value to zero what will happen is the zero will go in the next scan of the PLC we will count the number three before the break actually happens and we jump out of that loop and sure enough that's exactly what happened so we'll try that again we'll put a zero in set that and exactly you can't really see it on the screen it happens so quickly that uh, within that scan that it jumps right back out again right. now the next uh, one we're going to talk about is subroutines now subroutines we have subroutine call we have macros we have subroutine entries returns global subroutines um, etc and what it will do is basically we have a subroutine name we either call it here or we call it up by a macro and then we execute the code or we, this is the normal program here so when we call a subroutine it will go to the subroutine number and execute that code hit the return and then return to the line after in which the subroutine is called now we can use the regular subroutine or we can use a macro. Now the macro, what it will do is prior to us going and executing, it will set our input and output registers uh, to our macro area. That way we can use the same code on several different input and output conditions that we have. All right. So um, if we look at our program here, and we'll go down, and here's my subroutine call so I'm calling subroutine number one and then we have a subroutine entry here which um, is number one and what it will do is turn on bit 100.02 I'll put number three for us if 22.01 is on so let's give that a try you'll see right now that I have subroutine call it's energized here so it's on so hit set Sure enough, the output turns on. If I if I turn this off, okay, my output still remains on. If I set this off, you can see that my output still remains on. That's because these rungs are not being scanned. It's not being called anymore. And because it's not being called, our execution, our outputs aren't being set. So they maintain the last state. So if I turn that back on again, we will go in here, it's off, so then we'll turn the output off. So set that off. Oh, sorry, set that on. Which energizes that routine, which then turns the output off, which is exactly what happens. Right. Now the last uh, program control instruction that we're gonna look at is step and step next. Also called step define, step, step start. Um, it's a very powerful instruction and what happens is if the control bits are on then everything in the steps is going to execute normally then when the bits go from on to off the instructions in the step are interlocked okay and they're interlocked um, I'll show you the table next that will show you how they're interlocked and then when it's off then all instructions in the in the steps or processes is no, no operations or NOPs they're, they're function zero so here's how the interlock status is with the specific output bits they're all off and then what we have is the present values they reset uh, completion flags reset and words and bits hold the previous status um, 
but the, ex the instructions aren't executed at all. So that's our interlock status for our step and step next. And what happens is this actually um, has to be appear at the start of your program. So if we look back at the start of our program here, we have the step and step next. And I've got a couple of different um, uh, bits that we're controlling here. We're controlling output 103 and output 104. And then we have the next step, which then uh, releases that to the rest of the program after that step. So if we, we come up with the step with, uh, without a defined um, control bit, then what happens is it indicates this is the end of the step, step next instructions. So that's why we have to stick it in the front of the uh, program here. So when I energize this step, what will happen is it goes to this word here, bit zero, bit zero, and then starts scanning this area here. And when it scans this area here, what we'll do is set output bit 100.03. Then it's actually looking for the next step, which is here, which is bit one. And then our step itself is bit one, zero, and it starts scanning this area. And it starts scanning this area and it continues until we have the next condition, which is 1.06. When that happens, it does a step next uh, with a dummy bit, basically, and it will go to the step the end, so it knows it's the end of that step routine. And when that happens, then the program continues. So let's give that a try. And what we'll do is, first of all, we'll energize this uh, step. We'll set that on. Sorry, set that off first. Then we can set that on. And sure enough, what happens is my first output here, output 100.03, starts uh, turning on. Now, what it's doing is it's waiting for um, my next one. So right now, it's we're scanning in here and setting the outputs. As soon as I turn this one on, then it turns this bit on, which then goes to the next step. And that next step then is executed. This previous step now turns off. So let's try that. And sure enough, see bit my output now is off here, and then my next one is on 100.04. Now because 100.04 is on, now it's waiting for this next one, this dummy uh, bit that we've put in this instruction, in order to go to the next step, which is now the defines the end of it. So when we do that, then the output um, five will then turn off. So we'll just uh, reset that one first. Now let's turn that on, and sure enough, that now turns off, and now we're scanning the rest of our program. All right. So that's it for the step and step next. We also have um, um, a, there's all these links that you see and that we've talked about so far are on our website, um, and that's at accautomation.ca. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just, to, just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, you'll get notification every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.